I still keep around an iPod Touch 4th generation. Uh, admittedly, most of the time now it does just live in a drawer waiting for an emergency. But over the years, this thing has really come in as a lifesaver. Whenever my phone breaks or something, this is what gets called upon first. I just use it as a music player. I actually managed to get eight years worth of use out of this. So I was using this fairly frequently up until 2018. Before I begin the video, I believe that there's going to be two types of people who are watching this. First type of person is someone who's just generally nostalgic and intrigued. Uh, by the iPod Touch 4th generation in 2020 and you just want to see how this holds up compared to a modern phone. The second type of person is someone with 20 quid spare and they're thinking about buying a 4th generation iPod Touch and if you're the second person, don't do it. Uh, I highly recommend not buying a 4th generation iPod Touch. These devices are 10 years old and it really does show and most of them the batteries will be completely dead and it's just not worth it. The design of the iPod Touch is still impossibly thin. It's actually much thinner than my iPhone and this somehow makes it feel modern. The back is made of stainless steel and I've not had a case on this iPod for years. And you can see that it's aged and scratched but I think this is one of the most durable Apple designs ever as this iPod has been very much neglected for the past five or six years and looks somewhat acceptable for the years of neglect it suffered. The front of the device has a fairly small by today's standards 3.5 inch screen. It has a resolution of 326 pixels per inch which weirdly is something that even the iPhone 11 has. Uh, because of this the display hasn't aged too badly. It's not amazing, but it still looks somewhat acceptable as it is a resolution that new iPhones still have. As you can see, my device has suffered some damage. I think it's as a result as as the battery ages, it expands and it's squeezing the display into the glass. Moving on to camera, the iPod has a 0.7 megapixel camera that was also able to film video in 720p. Uh, at the time, this wasn't necessarily a groundbreaking camera, but I, it was still somewhat decent. Uh, the video came out acceptable, so much so that I actually created a YouTube channel dedicated to iPod videos, where I would just film every day something on my iPod and upload it to this channel. A quick side note, uh, a video that I've got on my iPod that's a little bit funny, is that when we were 17 and driving, my friends car's wheel fell off and the only device I had on me was an iPod so I vlogged it with that. So um, excuse the awful video quality but we were just driving down this road and then Joe's wheels started making this really interesting noise and then we were like that doesn't sound healthy and we parked up and his wheels fallen off. Hi! <laughs> this is Joe and that's his wheel that's not there and this is it. It hasn't aged well with photos looking just bad really. There's no detail in the photos, they're very blurry, the colours look muted and they're just not great photos. Uh, in 2017, sort of one of the last years that I was still regularly using my iPod, I worked in a shop and every week a new rotor would be put up and I used to take photos of the rotor on my phone and when my phone broke I started doing it on the iPod and I quickly realised that the camera was so bad you couldn't even read the photos that I had taken. The video hasn't aged well but again I still think it's watchable. Uh, the videos and photos have an oddly nostalgic feel to them. The front facing camera is awful but at the same time hasn't aged badly because front facing cameras are just still garbage. This is a test of the front facing camera. I have got very good lighting as I am stood in front of my window. So yeah, this is pretty decent conditions for the front facing camera. I think the audio is not too terrible, but yeah, the front facing camera isn't looking like it's great. Right, so I am using the front facing camera. It is not great lighting conditions. And I just took two photos and they came out just dark. You couldn't see it at all. And it's really not that dark. Like it made it look considerably darker than it is. Performance. So this iPod is running iOS 6.1.6 .6 and it's a little bit slow. Uh, app loading time is definitely longer than what you're used to, but where it's really bad is just general interface. So as you're swiping through pages, it feels clunky and slow and non-responsive really. The keyboard is especially difficult. This is made harder by how small the display is, but also the input lag between typing something and it coming up on the display makes it very frustrating to type on. 
on and it's kind of uncomfortable to type on because it's so thin it feels like it's just sticking into your hand Safari now is pretty much unusable. It's very slow to load a web page, which isn't helped by my bad internet, but it's really not nice to use. And because of the fact that it's running iOS 6, most apps don't support this anymore. Facebook app, the Messenger app, Instagram, most apps that you would use do not work on this device at all and the only way you can access them is through Safari. One weird thing that does still work on the iPod 4 is iMessage so you can just link it to your Apple ID and you can still iMessage people as long as you've got internet and that's kind of useful even though typing sucks it's just cool that iMessage still works. Weirdly, one of the reasons why I keep this iPod around is for games. So some of my favourite ever iOS games work on this device and were never updated to work on bigger displays and just don't work anymore. A Zombie Highway is probably my favourite and the one that I play the most. Even now sometimes I sit in lectures and just play on this game. And it works on my iPhone 10, but it's more fun on the iPod. I always loved my iPod Touch. This actually introduced me to taking photos and having a camera always on me that I could vlog and film with. Unfortunately, it is no longer worth buying and my iPod Touch is struggling to survive now. It's just hanging on to dear life. Only really good thing that this is used for now is I put Spotify on it. So if my phone breaks, I don't have to go without music. The headphone port is actually toast, but it works with Bluetooth headphones. And now that I've got AirPods, it will work with my AirPods. So that's cool. I hope you enjoyed this video. I feel like the iPod Touch 4 has aged considerably better than a lot of electronic devices from 2010. However, I can't recommend that anyone buys one for the sake of buying one because it just isn't that good.